Hi, good afternoon, everyone, or good morning. Uh, my name is Neil. Uh, thanks for the intro. And I'm with a company called RunScope, and we do uh, API performance testing and monitoring. Um, I mean, t testing has kind of a, a kind of a wide connotation depending on who you are. So, I just uh, I'm a developer. That's my background, and I've been kind of uh, using APIs to build businesses. Um, uh, I was a more of a consumer of APIs at first, like when I started doing startups many years ago, and then I uh, started uh, creating APIs for other for other developers to consume. And it's a completely different type of uh, mindset uh, from consuming to providing. And then I went to a, uh, a company called Mashery that manages APIs, and I was right in the middle, uh, dealing with uh, companies that uh, provided them, and then with uh, obviously hundreds of thousands of developers that consume them. And so I'm going to kind of oversimplify things a little bit and say, uh, like, what, what kind of APIs do we test? So uh, when I was at Mashery, I noticed that we have a lot of APIs where just kind of simple get methods on, on just not, not so much static data, but like data where you're just retrieving, you know, retrieving status, or in this case, it was you know, getting a list of latest news articles, similar to like, uh, getting the, the most recent messages on Twilio's API. That's a nice get method. And then there's like transactional types of API calls, where there's posts. And imagine the difference between testing, testing these two different types of methods. Uh, you know, a, a get method, you might just be looking at the data that you're getting back. A post method, you're actually saving something, and you want to see whether or not that worked. And then there's like service, service API. So uh, we run a microservices architecture and every, uh, at RunScope. Like 62 microservices are behind all of our, is behind our software. And we test all of those, but we're not really doing uh, exactly just getting things like getting status and, or posting things in transactions. We do like really in-depth testing to make sure our services are healthy. And so th these are the kind of APIs I'm going to be talking about today. And we can apply some of the things I'll be talking about into, um, uh, into this talk. So who's doing the testing? So I'm not a QA guy. I'm, a, I'm more of an engineer. But I'm meeting more QA people every day being at RunScope. And so we kind of have like very distinct audiences here that, that do API testing. QA folk, uh, developer, core eng, the people that are either uh, developing the APIs and, and, and uh, creating them, or the ones that are responsible for integrating them. And then DevOps folks that are making sure the darn thing is running and that deploys are working properly. And then even product owners and managers, people that aren't even necessarily technical, are starting to test these APIs because there's tooling available that they can. So, um, APIs are kind of meta because you have to look at both sides. Uh, I mean, if you, ha if you guys are developers and you write tests, or if you're testers, you write tests, and you're, you're building tests against your code or your services internally, um, little do you know that if you are exposing a service online, there's a whole other team of people that are doing also tests against your service. And they have to do, they're replicating your work essentially, right? So it's, kind of, it's, it's an interesting paradigm, the fact that there's testing of APIs on both the consumption and the providing side. So what is it we're testing for? Again, I'm going to oversimplify. Is anyone here in QA at all? Any testers? Like even fewer people that, know, that are testers that know what RunScope is. So uh, load testing. And I'm going to generalize here, because like, load testing is typically like standard load on your app or your service, and then maybe some peaks, but kind of within normal operating parameters. Stress testing is when you really pound that thing to the point where you want to see, you know, will it break? Right? Uh, how much can it handle? And then there's like capacity testing, which is more uh, like abstracted to users. How many user sessions? And you know, uh, it's 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 less about the technical ops and more about you know user use. And then there's performance testing and speed, and uh, like speed, this velocity. I'm going through this this deck. Sorry, by the way, I talk very fast. Um, performance testing is looking at not just the speed of the calls, but also latency. Uh, you're looking for any types of uh, anomalies or just the way that things are happening over time, particularly if you're accumulating more information in your, in your API, you want to be really conscious of that. So we're looking at performance and speed and also any type of networking issues. Obviously, this is not just code level stuff where it's compiling and running on a CPU. These are things that are hap they're going over the wire. And so how, uh, you know, how an API call reacts when it's being called from Ireland to US, you know, to US East as opposed to from US West to US East, they can be a, there can be a huge difference there. Another thing we look for in tests is, is correctness or validation. And this kind of also, I'm oversimplifying it here, because it could be like um, JSON schema uh, type of validation or swagger validation or RAM validation against, against your payload. Like, is the payload structured as it should be according to this, the schema definition? 
or validation in terms of uh, are the values there that I expect. So if, uh, if, the, you know, if the messages uh, get call on, um, on Twilio says that um, you know, it has an array of messages and it gives me an SID and I try to fetch that message and it's not there, obviously that's not correct. That's a problem. So I, I come from Detroit. My dad was an engineer and uh, had a god awful amount of tools. And he used to always tell me, son, always try to use the right tool for the job. And he'd just say this over and over again. It's one of those things that, as a kid, like the very few things that stuck in my brain, this is one of them, because I would always be using the wrong tool. I'm the guy that would take the flathead screwdriver to try to open up a Phillips, you know, to try to unscrew a Phillips screw. And um, the right, I, I believe that there's so many tools out there that a lot of developers or QA people, they don't know because they're kind of older legacy tools um, that you really should know about these things. And I'm going to uncover a few of those things. And so, for instance, how many, <laughs> how many people here uh, code in Perl or are brave enough to raise your hands? Yeah, very few of you. However, if, for those of you that have screwed around in Perl even in the past, you know that there's no regular expression matching engine as good as Perl. Or there's no way to extract text from any text document better than Perl. There's regex in every other language, but we stay away from Perl because it's kind of like, I don't know, it's just not sexy. However, it is a fantastic tool. In fact, most DevOps people know they, they know Perl. But anyhow, I, I just bring that up because it is often the right tool, even though it's not a sexy tool, it's a great one. And my dad didn't say much, but he used to always uh, tell me this too. Put my damn tools back when you're done. By the way, that, that's not my dad. That's just some random Asian wise man was my query. Uh, I don't know. I don't think my dad would be too happy if I put this picture up here. So I'm going to cover a few tests. That I, I know that uh, a few tools. I know that the, the talk title is modern, uh, but I guess I, I really wanted to, like, if it was a regex, I'd substitute modern with useful, right? Um, so I'm going to unmirror here and go uh, demo mode after I get out. OK, here we go. So uh, when, when, when the text looks legible enough, is that, oh, see here, let me know if this is big enough. Is that, is that readable or bigger? Bigger? All right, hold on. OK. So uh, we're going to talk about uh, load, one moment, uh, load and stress test tools. Note. Here we go. OK. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is one. Uh, how many here have actually like compiled Apache? That's crazy town, right? I mean, probably even like there'll be negative hands if I say how many people have compiled Linux, right? So I come from the days of where everything was compiled, and we walk, you know, uphill both ways to school. But uh, how many here, here know what Apache Bench is? A B. Oh, gosh. Okay, this is great. And uh, here we go. So I have a, uh, let me see if I get this going. Get my browser up there. Here we go. I'll, I'll blow this up too. So I just have this some cheesy little mock API thing at api.mansell.com. And I, and I have uh, running on Apache. Let me SSH into this thing. OK. And uh, let's just tail this. OK. Uh, let me see if I can do this. This is really tricky, guys. Don't try this at home. OK, here. So I'm just tailing my, my, my common log format out of Apache. And um, I'm going to show you a tool called Apache Bench. And uh, really, this is something that I think everybody should know. And in fact, you have it. If you don't, I'd, I'd, I'd be surprised. So it's AB. And um, here we go. The syntax is simple. AB. Dash n, that's the number of connections. Dash c is number of concurrent connections. And I'm just going to pound this thing, let's say 1,000, and let's say 10 concurrent. It's going to run it. If I looked at my log, common log format, let's see, it's just being pounded right now by Apache Bench. Maybe I should have done less. OK, here we go. Oh, yep, let's do a lot less. Let's do, 10 re let's do 100 requests, even less. Let's do 50 requests. I guess the reason I'm showing this test, I'm showing you this tool is because not many of you knew it. If everyone raised their hands, I skippered over it. This is, in, this is a tool that you have to have in your toolbox. And it's, a, it's kind of a, a nice synchronous test that you can run just from the command line. Uh, Brew and, I'm sure you could find it on Brew if, uh, there you go. So this is what you get back. And uh, you, can, 
you can, this is, this is how I used to like uh, denial service attack my own stuff. I would send like 100 concurrent, 200 concurrent, whatever, you know, until my, my Linux client couldn't take it anymore, or my server couldn't take it anymore, actually both. Uh, and this is a great way to know exactly how it's gonna perform. So imagine if you were to increase these numbers by one, by two, by three on the concurrency side, the number of requests, you're gonna see, your, your, uh, you're gonna see it buckle. Now, this isn't the most beautiful report, but it's useful, and again, it's right at your fingertips. Um, another tool that I'm gonna talk about is more uh, on the graphic side of things. Anyone here use JMeter? Gosh, see, this, this tell me this is a young crowd, because these are all, now, these tools have been around for a while. So uh, you, maybe you've heard of JMX scripts or JMX configurations. And this is uh, uh, open source, just like Apache Bench is. And um, let's see if I have a, a template here. OK. So JMeter is a GUI-driven Java free and open source uh, project from the Apache Foundation that allows you to, uh, to create. Uh, a lot of people use JMeter for doing stress testing. And it's a little bit more complex. It's actually it's a hell of a lot more complex. Uh, there's a lot of things here that it's not very, um, how can I put it? It's not very user friendly. However, it's powerful as hell. And in fact, if you know any DevOps people, I'll guarantee you that they, have, they still probably mess around with JMeter. The downside is, is, the downside is that you have to really man, oh, I'm, I'm not even showing it. You, you have to manage it through the, this, this UI. And this UI is, very, very, it feels very clunky. If you go into the XML, uh, the JMX files, it's even uglier. Uh, like when, you were, when you're defining assertions, it, it doesn't make any sense in terms of like uh, the mapping of, 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 the, of the logic between uh, conditions of greater than or equal to, it's like a type equal, uh, you know, the value is 12. It just doesn't make any sense. Great, fantastic tool if you need to do any type of uh, validation and or stress testing, but uh, complex as hell. And I'm going to bring it to this one, which is, has anyone here used Loader.io from SendGrid? One guy, and he's wearing a SendGrid jacket. Let me, let me, let me uh, put this, OK, good. So uh, this is not a SendGrid Labs. Everyone knows SendGrid does email as a service. Well, this, uh, they have this labs team that just builds really cool uh, dev tools. And this is called Loader. And uh, let's just create a new one. Oh, hell, I have one already. So I have the same one calling the same endpoint, uh, api.mansell.com. And this is what the reports look like. But I want to actually see if I can do a new one, because it's kind of cool uh, to watch it happen in real time. So a lot more beautiful than, than JMeter, a lot more beautiful than, let's say, even Apache Bench. Um, and you get all the stats as well. Here you can, you can really you could take down a service with this if you wanted to um, and send as many concurrent. I'm, I'm being very kind to the server. I don't want to crash my Linux box. Um, but you see here, this is essentially load and stress testing. Uh, I mean, th this is a very generous and easy test. I'm not going too hard on it. But they have a free tier. I try it. Uh, there, there are other tools out there. I think that, um, I mean, I actually, I found a slew of tools that kind of do some things similar. But this, by far, I found was one of the easiest ones to use. So in RunScope, we don't do load testing. We get a lot of questions, like, why don't you guys do load testing, but um, maybe down the road. But this, there's fantastic tooling out there already that does this. You can schedule things, too. So by the way, so Apache Bench, command line interface. JMeter, GUI, but it's, it's complex as hell. Loader, uh, very simple. You can schedule a test to run you know, a daily. Uh, you can trigger tests to run. Yes, by making an API call, and there is an API into it as well. So let's try this. OK. So summary here. So clearly, loader, SAS, GUI, something that's kind of modern, right? I mean, you, I don't think that most people here haven't even heard of the first two tools. If I sent you to Loader and I give you the other two, I'll guarantee you, you'll probably end up using Loader. And again, free tier and really easy to use. Performance testing. That's my cousin, by the way. It's like that old guy was not my dad, but that guy on the right is really my cousin. He's an Olympian. Uh, his name's JR. Anyhow, uh, performance testing. Now, this is where we're looking at speed. We're not looking for, look for correctness. We're looking particularly like around latency. And that's, that's the big thing. How long do things take? to run uh, API calls. One moment. So 
again, Apache Bench, I showed you that. You can see what the response times are. Um, whoop, that's the log. You can glean this information from here. You can see what the, what the transfer rates were, requests per second. And again, you can, you, can, uh, you, you can get this from this command line tool. JMeter also has a lot of graphs and uh, textual output uh, that you can uh, get from, uh, from out of JMeter. But, a moment. Loader also has that, but I'm gonna show you what RunScope has. And the reason I'm showing you these tools is not just to you know, balance this out but, uh, and just do a product pitch. That's not why I'm here. So if you look at those tests, particularly Apache Bench or JMeter, and you were to fire them synchronously, like you're just sitting at your computer and you do that, that's a snapshot of performance at that time, which is swell, but that just tells you what's happening at the very moment. It, it, I think it's a hell of a lot more useful to do these things on a regular basis and to kind of get a baseline, to get an average, to see how things are going. So I'm gonna pull up a report here in uh, RunScope that shows, uh, we've been running a lot of tests uh, during, in the demo pod over there. We have a booth right over there, by the way. And I'm gonna pull up these tests. So here, the Twil Twilio view last message test. And the reason I say that this, is, this is really important here is that you just can't look at performance in a snapshot and say, yeah, things are healthy or, you know, or things are hitting the fan. You have to look at it over time. So our default, look, our default view on this particular one is like a 24-hour snapshot of what the perform performance is like. How are you supposed to build a test against your APIs unless you, know, unless you have some type of baseline numbers? Of course, everyone thinks that 20 milliseconds is awesome or not, you know, less, more than 400 milliseconds, is, it's bad. That does, it's meaningless. Uh, this, this response time here, there's two requests in this test, so it's actually two separate, uh, two, two requests added together. That's why the numbers are kind of high. But the, this is what you would use to establish a baseline for any type of test. So if, imagine you set up a test with assertions that say that if, I, if my API does not respond within you know, 400 milliseconds, trigger an alert, right? You, you need to set real, realistic expectations around performance tuning. You just can't just choose a number or look at your, uh, you know, or, or just make basic um, s simple calls. You need to kind of look at it in a functional test view, in an aggregate view, and um, I mean, one, per one method on its own could be super fast, like a ping method is instantaneous. Any type of real, uh, real method that you call, uh, which of course you would uncover in a functional test. So for instance, in this test, and I'm gonna, here's, I'm gonna I should get the most hands here. How many people use a Twilio API? All right, good. So then you guys can grok this then. So in this test, we're getting all the messages, and then uh, we're gonna we're extracting this uh, uh, the mes first message ID, and then we're and then we're gonna grab that message, right? So when I run this test, I I can get performance metrics on a per request basis, and then I get a total at the bottom. So this first request is 245 milliseconds to grab all the messages, and to grab the single message was 171. This type of information, if you keep on running these tests over and over again, rather than just take these snapshots uh, or run a cron once a day or every five minutes, uh, you can run, like, the, you can automate this to run every minute, right? And then also you don't just run it from one location. Unless, of course, you have a one-to-one -one connection where you're, you're, you're either connecting from the exact same server to the exact same API endpoint and all your mobile, you know, it, it, it's, that's not true. I mean, uh, if it's a mobile app, you're connecting from all around the world. If it's a web app, also the same thing. So to perform tests with, let's say, an Apache Bench or a JMeter, unless you distributed those things all around the world, you're going to have some very, very predictable timings because it's always going from US East, that static IP that you have at Amazon, to wherever the hell that, you know, whatever uh, Twilio's APIs are, right? You guys rocking that? So useful thing is that if you are gonna build, build out your own testing framework, you're gonna need to kind of have, you wanna have the test running from more than one location. All right, so again, not code level tests, these are API tests, so a lot of things are at play here. Network routes, BGP, things hit the fan all the time. So if I turned all these on, I'd actually create, these, this is 12 cloud locations, I'd get 12 sample, uh, if I ran this on a one minute, res one minute uh, schedule, every minute I have 12 pieces of sample data from all around the world. And again, that, that's something that is useful for knowing when things are bad. I think that's the whole idea here, you're testing particularly performance to measure it against something else. Right? You want something actionable, and that is, holy crap, things are trending, uh, you know, we're getting either inter intermittent spikes or we're getting gradual increases in latency. Uh, that's, that's kind of our, that, that's what we're trying to avoid. 
And that's why we do performance testing. Okay. Let's see. Ah, well, so you run all these tests. Where does that data go? So again, command line tools, you can either script these things. So the number one uh, thing, or the, the two things that uh, our customers do before they use RunScope was uh, nothing at all, or they write their own scripts. And the, the, second, the second scenario is not necessarily so bad, except the fact that it's not, it's not always so manageable. There's always that one person, that guy or that gal that is a resident expert at building that Python script or that Perl script or that Bash script that does the cron testing. And that's not, that doesn't scale very well with a, with, a, with a real organization, or with a larger organization. So even then, they write, if you write those scripts to, to collect this data and you have some assertion in there that says, you know what, if this thing's slow, then shoot off some email or you know, uh, send out a PageDuty page or a Twilio message, that's not necessarily enough. You want to have some type of repository on this so you can take a look at the long-term view. Uh, maybe you would use like New Relic Insights or Keen.io or Datadog. That, like, you want to dump your data into something else. You're not analytics experts, well, maybe some of you are, but you're not going to build an amazing analytics backend. That's not your core business. You're going to want to use someone else. So uh, getting that data outside into some other type of uh, repository, because you're, you're, not, uh, you're not data experts. So like integrations, uh, that's a big thing. We have a lot of our... Um, uh, a lot of our customers will just take all the web, all, every single result and just call back. They just post every one of these into some t type of data repository, or they could just, you could just integrate with something like uh, here, like Keen or, or Insights, right? And it just pushes it in there so you, could, you can run more complex queries and more complex reports over time and really find out what the hell the problem is or, if, you know, or you know, eliminate false positives of, of problems. Another thing about performance metrics that, that's kind of funky is that we can set up all these mechanics, but if we're not looking at them, it doesn't mean anything. So the whole binary thing, my crap is down. Oh, by the way, like a lot of, I, I've been hearing, hearing a lot of like comparisons. Well, this sounds like Pingdom. You guys are just seeing my stuff's up. Pingdom's great, but this is not like ICMP. We're not pinging anything. Like we're actually collecting information. And the idea of running, perform <laughs> running tests and measuring performance but not looking at reports is silly. But that's what a lot of us do. And it's very zero sum. If stuff hits the fan and it crashes, if it's red, then we just were like, oh shit, we gotta fix this. However, there's a lot of things that happen before red. And that's why we need to measure things and look at them, which is, again, to reinforce the reason why you'd want to use some type of analytics provider so that you're not just responding, right? Because by the time that it's red, you're already screwed. Right? We see it every day. You know, people are like, oh crap, my stuff is down. But there's always leading indicators in the measurements that you have to look at. So when you look at graphs like this one here, I'll just show you one. Uh, let's just pull the stuff for host api.twilio.com. And let's, uh, so the, I, I just filter by Twilio and let's say perform, oh, shite. We'll just pull performance. Right. So we use Keen, Keen.io in the back, and that's how we kind of uh, capture our time series data. Yep, five minutes. And uh, what you look for here, since this is, a, so of course we analyze all of our page views and we see very, not enough of our customers are looking at this. And they need to because uh, imagine if this was real test data and you had these, these intermittent spikes that occurred um, at, at, you know, always at noon or at 8 p.m. Like, that's a telltale sign. Or if something is, always, is, is trending, it's very hard to test for these types of predictive conditions, right? It's, uh, you don't want false positives and people being alerted to things, which means that humans actually have to look at this stuff. So anyhow, uh, I know I'm beating a dead horse here, but it's super, super important. And of course, you know, we're working on some things to try to make it a little bit more insightful and like, predictive of, of issues, but like, it's like a, it reminds me of like the uh, auto automotive crash um, you know, avoidance systems. So uh, you know, there's an obstacle in your blind spot and it tells you. I think that we need to work on, you know, there's, we have trending latency or performance issues. You have a problem, like, or in this particular, from this particular data center from, or, for, or from this location. So next I'm gonna talk about uh, correctiveness. 
Oh, one, one moment. Here we go. Let's try this. All right. So on the performance testing summary, um, you can see I, mostly I, I covered RunScope. They all have that data. But the thing is, is that I'd say the RunScope is a product that actually kind of compiles it. But even then, as swell as I think our tool is, there's still more you need to do. Uh, to have like a really, really comprehensive, like long-term view of these things, and also uh, your APIs don't live in a silo; they interact with other things. So maybe you need to mix it in with other type of system data in, in order to uh, to be conclusive as to what the real problem is. So next, I'm going to talk about uh, correctness and validation testing. Mirror. I'm jumping between mirror and unmirroring, and this is like a, OK, here we go. So all these tools, so the, the tools that do handle this, so Apache Bench doesn't have any of that, but JMeter does, the idea of assertions. So does everyone know what I mean by assertion? So I'm asserting that if this particular condition is true, then the test is, has passed. Or if this condition is not met, then the, then the test fails. That's basic assertion, like this assertion logic. So, uh, the tools that I mentioned, like JMeter, has very, very powerful assertion languages. Uh, if you are, um, if you're using like uh, SOAP, SOAP UI is a fantastic tool for doing type of SOAP assertions. And then also um, RunScope handles assertions. And I'll show you uh, some of that right now. So back to this Twilio example. So this is the difference between just knowing if a service is up or down and seeing like, the quality that, that the things that we're expecting are there. Um, I should have done this too. So let's say, let's say response time, by the way, is less than or equal to two seconds. So uh, for data quality, what we're looking for here, we have one type of assertion in, in this, on this method, and that is this can't be empty, right? If that's empty, we have a problem. And I look at the last call that I made, and this is, the, this is basically the, the, the value I'm checking. So this is a programless assertion. You can do scripted assertions as well and use JavaScript, uh, the, the, the Chai library. Um, but that's the idea is that you, we can actually check to make sure that things are true. You just don't do up-down tests. You don't just do pings, right? You don't create a special endpoint that's a ping that says, yes, my API is working and it's correct. You actually want to do functional tests on these things. The same way that you give care and love to, uh, to unit tests in your code, you're going to want to do the same thing for your API. It is not. Not, it's not a static thing. I mean, even if you were to, on a, on a, build, on a build pipeline, destroy everything and rebuild it again, um, you know, the APIs are dynamic. I mean, particularly if, 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 if you don't destroy it and you don't have, you don't have a teardown and you have like a, like a static testing environment, uh, uh, you're, you're going to have different scenarios, every, uh, different scenarios and values that could come up, and you're going to want to test against that. Other types of validation I mentioned earlier, like JSON schema validation, which basically is just saying that it matches the schema that I had defined. How many people here actually use schemas like JSON schema, Swagger, RAML? Again, very, well, yeah, very few. So for the rest of you, you're flying by the seat of your pants. You don't even have a schema to validate against. You're going to have to validate against either the mock data that you know that you stuffed in there, your sub data, or uh, you're going to have to do a multi-step test that would check uh, that if I did something in this, on this post in the first method, uh, I'm, going to I'm going to do a get in the second method and make sure that it's there. I know it sounds really basic, but you have to do these things for every one of your methods uh, to, be, to have a true, true, like, true correctness in, in your tests. And I am almost out of time, so I'm going to whiz through something that I think is also pretty important, and that is tools for debugging. Okay. So debugging and troubleshooting. Uh, when RunScope first started, before we had automated testing and, and radar, we were basically debugging. And so the idea was, I don't know what the hell's happening in this API. You know, it's just kind of this black box. My client's making these calls. I want some visibility. And that's kind of how we started before we got into the, the, the performance monitoring. And I'm just going to go right into this because I'm almost out of time. So hurl. Uh, how, how many people use hurl? Awesome, like the one guy there again. So Hurl is basically like curl in the cloud. Postman, I got to see a lot of hands there, yeah? OK, so basically it's like curl in Chrome. So you can you, you post gets. So you know that if you go to your browser, any request you do is a get. So the idea that you can do post puts and deletes in your browser, awesome. Charles proxy, 
now we're getting into kind of the, the network interception. You're actually, you're, you're putting a man in the middle and looking at their traffic and sniffing it. Um, request bin. Wow, so request bin's an amazing tool. It's, a, it's, it's, you, it's free and you can capture. So for debugging webhooks, if you have a, any type of webhook notification coming in, you're like, damn, I was expecting this event. You would actually have it post to request bin and re request bin will capture that and you can view it. And then, uh, and then within RunScope itself, we also have all of these types of things where you could essentially do it, have a request bin. And if I just have one more minute, I wanna show you something that I think it's kind of tucked away in RunScope, but I think this is one of the, one of the coolest things. So in RunScope, we, we log everything. So full request and response introspection, headers, parameters, and the full responses. We even index the responses as well. Uh, you can keyword search on them. But it's this thing right here that's kind of hidden. And this used to be a, a star. So watch this. Let's say I went to reddit.com. Imagine this was an endpoint instead of Reddit. Uh, we changed the dots to dashes, and we put your bucket ID in there. And let's just take this and copy it, paste it. I'm going to open it up, and darn it, it looks just like Reddit. The difference is here is that if you go back to my log, you're going to see two requests, one's for favicon, but here, get Reddit. This is a request as it came from my browser, and this is a response as it came back from Reddit. It's a pure pass-through proxy. It's super easy. Companies like DocuSign, they're a customer of ours. Their mobile team uses this. They have like a debug flag in their mobile app. If they want to turn that thing on, all API calls flow through Unscope instead, so they have total introspection. They can see it. It's that visibility. So these types of tools like this that can show you kind of what's happening on the inside, really, really, really awesome. And it's completely seamless. You could just put any URL you want in here from api.twilio.com. And I go back to Traffic Inspector and it's there. Super powerful, by the way. All right. Blah, blah, blah. A lot of people use us, small company. Da, da. And uh, so please try RunScope out. Happy to give you a demo. If you have an API, I'd be happy to build a test for you live, and we are hiring. So thank you. <laughs>